welcome to Costume Commentary. I'm Kate. And I'm Britt. And today we're talking about Perfume, the story of a murderer. <laughs> it's spooky. Overall, eh, it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I liked it up until about the end. I loved the movie itself, the plot, characters, the mm -hmm. weird, super weird ending. <laughs> I thought it was great. Uh, the costumes, eh. There are some parts of it that are really cool, but all in all, it was too historically accurate for most of it to be entertaining. As far as the costumes go, yeah. in our Hamilton video on Wednesday, they updated it and they made it relatable. Whereas with Perfume, they wanted to portray this imagery. They were like, let's go full historically accurate, and it is so freaking boring and just like bleh. As far as, you know, it being an enjoyable film in relation to the costumes, like I don't think it succeeded there. I love movies about murderers. I collect movies about murderers and I freaking love them. There are only a handful of movies about murderers that I didn't like and this was one of them that I was like, I've seen it once, I don't think I ever want to see it again. I think it's good enough to see it once. Yes. But it's not one that we would be like, you have to, like if you don't feel like watching this movie, that's cool with us. Just go look at the pictures to see how historically accurate it is. My favorite historical accuracy in it is the fact that the men are wearing makeup and obvious wigs oh, with yeah. hair powder on them. It's a wig, you can tell. There is dark hair underneath of it, and it has a clear line where you can tell that it's a wig, and it's very well dusted, mm -hmm. and that is such an accurate thing for the time. The more ridiculous and not real your mm -hmm. wig looked, the better as far as your status. Baldini, the perfume maker that he learns from, he looks super crusty, and his wig is not great, and his... No, his makeup job is not fantastic. It's accurate, though. Yes. I did really love that element. And then with the girls, there were some inaccuracies, but one of my favorite details is the prints that they're wearing, because that's very accurate for the time. This was like when those were starting to become a popular thing, and I loved seeing that detail. The uh, necklines were so surprisingly really accurate. Yeah! Loved. Wearing stomachers. Although there's one scene where it's pretty obvious that her stomacher is- It's like sewn in, yeah. isn't it? Which, no. That's okay. At least she had one. Forgive. This is right before, I believe, the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. So there was a really clear class distinction, which definitely comes across in this movie. Like, you have Grenouille, which I think that's how you pronounce his name. He obviously is incredibly poor. And then you have Laura, who's obviously got some money. But the thing is, the rich during this time were ridiculous. And the flamboyant she, ruled. And she should have been ridiculous. And I get what they were trying to do. They were trying to portray her as the image of innocence that Granoe was trying to achieve in his perfumes. I mean, she could have been innocent in bright colors. They toned down the dresses, it seems, to bring out her hair color, which her hair color is wrong, super wrong, really unfashionable for the time. Yep. So she would have been wearing a wig. There are two redheads in this film. The girl with the plums, and it makes sense for her to be a redhead because she's poor. She can't afford the dyes or a wig to hide her unfashionably red hair. But Laura is from a very wealthy family. She could have afforded the bricks of dye. She could have afforded a wig. I get it for like the aesthetics, mm -hmm. but... One styling choice that I really enjoyed was that Grenoui is never wearing white. Mm -hmm. And they chose that to make him look more like a shadowy figure. Even his undergarments that he's wearing at one point are kind of a blue color. It really adds to his menacingness and it makes him blend in with the background. I feel like white is such a stark and innocent color that Obviously, that's not him. I think it also, that does also lend to some of the reasons why, like, I couldn't connect to this movie very mm -hmm. well, is because they made their main character, like, he is, he's, like, menacing and mm -hmm. not super likable, mm -hmm. and you don't understand his motivations, mm -hmm. but he's the person you're seeing this world through. Yeah. And so it's hard to get into the movie because you're like, what? So, bad news first. Which one's your least favorite? My least favorite is the girl with the plums. A, because her hair is inaccurate, and I get why it's not changed. B, she's very lackluster. For somebody who kind of starts his obsession with collecting the sense of women. I mean, she's pretty, but her costuming isn't great. My least favorite is actually Laura, especially the green one that she wears with like, oh, the frills. Yeah. It's accurate for the time, but not fancy enough to meet her status. And it's just like so boring. It's so boring. That's some of the hilarity of looking at France during the time before the French Revolution is just looking at the first estate and being like, what are you doing? 
This is where that, that thing with the Hunger Games came from. That concept of them wearing these ridiculous things in order to compete and be like, oh, you're going to put a bird on your head? I'm going to have a flock of birds that I had genetically altered to match my hair color. They just compete to yeah. get more and more ridiculous and ridiculous. It was real life and it was ridiculous and that's not here. If you want more evidence of that, Marie Antoinette paid somebody to frequently come and design wigs for her. One of them was a ship cresting in waves, sculpted in her hair. But the weird thing is we know that they worked really hard. They researched for, what was yes. it, like 15 weeks? And they made like 1,400 costumes. It was like they got too wrapped up in like, let's make it historically accurate. And then they forgot to make it interesting. We can forgive historical inaccuracies if it lends to the plot, or if it makes things more interesting, or if, if you did it historically accurate, it'd be, it'd be super boring and weird, which is what this is. But had they done it completely historically accurate, with the French being crazy, yeah. it could have been way more interesting. In better news, which one was your favorite? My favorite was actually one of the brightest costumes in the entirety of the film, mm -hmm. and that is one of Laura's. Mm -hmm. It is a oriental style robe. It is this bright aqua blue with gold trim all around it. It's absolutely stunning. Brings out her skin tone, brings out her hair color. It is a stunning piece. It's one of those moments in the film that really captures scent. Because she's leaning out a window with wind is blowing her hair wild and crazy around her. And this robe is kind of billowing in the wind, but it's obviously still a stiff material, so it's not moving too much, but it's moving with her. Yeah. And it really conveys this brightness. I love that. That's probably my favorite scene in the entirety of the film. What would be your favorite? My favorite is not from my favorite scene, because the scene is very strange. It is similar in color, where it's very bright and vivid, and that's the reason why I like it. But it's the very last outfit that we see uh, Gregory in, when he is standing there about to be executed, and he's wearing this bright blue coat, which mm -hmm. the cut of it is historically accurate, and it also is very flattering on him, and it's just so bright. I think it was just my my eyes were like felt relieved after looking at this incredibly monochromatic film that was getting little bits of color at a time, and then at the end it was so bright, so when I was like, gosh, finally. And then the movie just sort of devolves from there. But I like that coat, purely aesthetically. But overall, Meh. Look up pictures of the costumes if you really like movies that are really interesting up until a point and then they get weird. Yeah. Then this is the movie for you. If not, then just look up the pictures. If you like this video better than we liked this movie, <laughs> make sure to leave a like down below and uh, comment anything that you'd like to see us review the costumes from, mm -hmm. as long as it has costumes. We will look into it. Stay tuned for our start of our three-week Stanley Kubrick series, starting with 2001 A Space Odyssey. Make sure to click subscribe if you want to be notified the moment that comes out. Thanks for watching! Well, and also my favorite thing about it is it's very groups of people. So often when you do shows that are set in the 80s or, you know, even in like the 40s or the 50s, you have like the preppy kids and the gracers. Or if it's in the 80s, like they all dress exactly the same pretty much no matter